I'm signing up for the Department of Wild Salmon. I don't know how much good I'll be in the field, but in any case, I, and I've never been so glad in my life that I don't eat farmed salmon. I don't know about the rest of like, oh. Anyway, I wanted to say quickly and succinctly a couple of things. I mean, the Green Party policy is that we shouldn't have any open uh, pen fish farms anywhere on our coastlines, Atlantic or Pacific. It's a really big issue. But when I was watching the film and the muzzling of Christy Miller, it was coming through my head. The words of the March 2012 federal budget, all government science will be, quote unquote, business led and industry relevant. Right? And the Canadian Food Inspection Agency and DFO both have conflicts of interest. The Canadian Food Inspection Agency has a mandate to promote the export of Canadian foods. This is why it took them some time after the maple leaf listeriosis event occurred to be willing to admit that they knew where it was coming from, that they had to withdraw our products from the border. And that's why the XL beef plant with its E. coli was discovered by U.S. border agents and not by Canadians. It was being reported in Canada, but CFIA, as that, I, don't, I can't remember her name of the poor benighted woman on the camera, but she's constantly thinking, if we report a disease in Canada, we hurt Canadian industry. DFO also has a conflict of interest in promoting salmon aquaculture. They have yet to report on the findings of the Cohen Commission. It's been since November. They are way, way late in responding to the Cohen Commission report. There has been no official response from the Government of Canada but budget of March 2013 allocated another $54 million this year to assisting in the streamlining of regulations around salmon aquaculture. So no official response, just more money. So there's a conflict of interest, there's a persistent preference for corporate profits over public health throughout the system, and there is the muzzling of scientists who might say something that would hurt Canadian industry, whether it's in the oil sands or the fish farms. It's completely consistent. You do not want evidence that gets in the way of corporate profits, even if it's killing your ecosystem, even if it runs a risk to human health. That's the federal scene. I'm doing my best. So, so let's just look at this for a minute. What is the economy behind salmon feedlots versus wild salmon? Wilderness tourism brings into this province $2.2 billion. Salmon farming, $500 million. Sport fishing, 8,400 jobs. Salmon aquaculture, 1,700. We really do need to protect these fish. And so I looked into the rules on what it would take for the province to get rid of this industry. And it says right on their license of occupation, it can be terminated in 60 days in the public interest. Uh, the NDP supports the recommendations of the Coal Commission as they apply to both the federal and the provincial governments. And I can tell you that, that myself and as a government, we do not accept the muzzling of the science around uh, the, the disease issue that you're examining. And we will continue to advocate for the research and the monitoring required to determine definitively whether farms are transferring disease to wild salmon. That's my commitment as a, as a candidate here. Uh, we do not support the elimination of the industry at this point. But absolutely, that research needs to continue, and we need to identify whether a disease is being transferred to wild salmon. That's my commitment to you.